Welcome to iPad Pros, the show all about using your iPad to be productive and get work done. I'm Tim Chen, host of the show. And to be honest, I kind of surprised myself how much I've enjoyed using it again. It was weird because I took like over, over a year without even having an iPad really. I thought this would be a good experiment, you know, help with, you know, the RSI and, and try and get some flexibility around my setup. And I didn't think I'd be here this far on. I know it's only three months, but for that's quite a long time just using an iPad. For my completely dumping the Mac, you know, and just coming over to iPad for three months. I don't see me going back. I much prefer the setup now. Welcome back to another episode of iPad Pros. We are joined in this episode once again by Lee Peterson. Lee was last on the podcast for episode 72 to discuss how he was using the iPad mini. Lee, since that time, moved on to the M1 MacBook Air and a little over three months ago purchased a 11-inch M2 iPad Pro. So in this episode, we discuss his recent switch back to the iPad and how he is using the iPad now. As a reminder, you can support this podcast over at patreon.com slash iPadPros or by subscribing in Apple Podcasts. My great thanks to everyone that supports the podcast financially. Even a dollar a month goes a long way in helping with the production of this show. By supporting the podcast, you'll get early access to both iPad Pros and Vision Pros. With that, here's my interview with Lee. Enjoy. Welcome back to the podcast, Lee. Hi, it's been a while. It has. <laughs> Not uh, much has happened, has it, since um, January 2020? <laughs> January 2020. What a <laughs> lifetime ago that was. <laughs> I know. Right before everything. Yeah. I suddenly thought when, when, when you know, you contacted me and I looked at, um, you know, the last one we had done and I saw it was January and I was like, 20, oh, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like, yeah, a lot has happened in those um, four years. Yeah. It's, you know. Episode 72 but, was uh, the episode if people want to check that out. And Back with the iPad Mini. Yeah, iPad Mini. That's what we dove into. It was fairly, it was it fairly new at the time? The sixth generation iPad uh, Mini. Was it even that Mini? I'm not even sure. It was. Oh, it might have been a different one because I, yeah, because I don't I think, think that Mini is that old, is that. it? Yeah. No, I think it was the um, the home button version. Yeah, the fifth gen. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious. Uh, since then, uh, has a Mini uh, sunsetted to? A different owner? Or are you still rocking that one, or? Um, it's still within the family. Um, yeah, the the one that we previously talked about ended up um, not taking updates anymore. It was quite slow, and and I, I and I re- I'd moved on to the M1 Mac. Okay. Um, yeah. And I really wasn't using the Mini that much, so yeah, I went to a family member rather than buying um, them buying a new one. But I do. I still, you know, occasionally I would be missing it. But what I found was. Um, I'd be on my phone for those bits because I'd had a iPhone 13 mini for quite a long time. Yeah. Um, and I'd switched over to the pro. So mm-hmm. I had a 15 pro. And as soon as I sort of got the bigger phone, I found I was naturally kind of using the, um, the iPad mini less. Yeah, for sure. So I thought, well, yeah, it, it makes sense to go to, to go to a family member. Um, I'll keep my phone and, and laptop. That's where I was at that sure. point. Um, I don't really miss it now. Having, yeah. having the pro, you know, the 11 inch, which seems to be a good size for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With the, with the phones, I would love if Apple added like with the Apple watch, you can have multiple Apple watches. And then once you start using it, it like takes over. I'd love if you could have like your iPhone mini alongside your pro max and just whatever one you're using, it gets the cellular service that you're paying for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've got the, I've got, I haven't, I haven't actually got the pro. I've got the pro rather than the max. The okay. Pro max. Yeah. Just because of my, you know, RSI, which I'm sure we'll talk about. In yeah. A minute. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, there's so many people I know that have got the mini who never, they, they, and they love it and, and, and they're not necessarily big iPad people, but I do know people who have, you know, they've either got it, had it from when they were young and they mm-hmm. were given it as a, maybe a seven or eight year old. Um, and they've grown up with having an iPad as being the only Mini, so that's naturally what they've always. Yeah, want. I had a so. second generation when they went Retina Mini, and they love that thing. But I just, I, I don't think I can be a two iPad person at this point in my life. No. With, the, with, the, with the Apple Vision Pro being uh, uh, another sort of iPad in a way. Uh, yeah, yeah but obviously yet to see that over here. But yes, um, yes. I'll definitely be getting, you know, when, when it does eventually get announced here, I'll, I'll be going for the demo. I'm not sure I've got a place for it in my kind of um, computing life, yeah, or budget for it, to be honest. Yes. But No, it's a, it's not. Uh, yeah, it is a, a costly device for sure. And it'll be even more expensive over here, I guarantee it. <laughs> yes, that's, that's how that works. Yes. Um, but anyway, yeah, yeah. And I, did, I definitely want to try one at some point. Yeah, so at some point you went from the Mini to an M1 MacBook Air. Is that right? It is. Yep. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, the uh, main reason I actually dropped the, dropped the iPad at that point was I was doing a lot of kind of job interview stuff. Mm-hmm. And I found it quite, it wasn't the Zoom wasn't working on the iPad that well. Was it where the camera was placed on the iPad? It, well, no, it's not. It was just because of the, when I'm do, I was doing a lot of interviews over, over Zoom and stuff. And I found just having me locked down to the single window. I know I can multitask and stuff, but I didn't want that adding the stress to the already stressful yeah. situation. So if so, it was today's scenario with stage manager, external display support, all that. I think that. I'd be okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it was a little bit too much. So I thought, well, let's just take that stress out of it. And 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 they had a deal at the time on Amazon here in the UK, and they had it for £700, which is, I'm not sure what that is in dollars now, but um, that was a really good deal. It's only the 8 gigabyte version, but that's that's been absolutely fine for me. Yeah, they're good little machines. Uh, on the Mac side, the 8 gigs of RAM doesn't seem to be a huge issue unless... I noticed on um, our home computer here, if you're running a lot of Rosetta apps, like if you didn't update the Office Suite to the uh, M, you know, the Apple Silicon version, mm. you just constantly get warnings of I'm out of memory, I'm out of memory. Out of memory. Yeah, and I, I'm trying to think. The only times I ran into slowness from the stuff I was doing was when I was suddenly started taking like the Pro Raw pictures, you know, on the phone. And trying to edit those in photos, and I was doing Logic Pro on it, and that was actually pretty good. But Final Cut Pro would, would, you know, exporting stuff out of Final Cut Pro was a little bit slow sometimes. Okay, but interesting. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, it was it was fine. Yeah, you know, I guess it depends what footage you're working with, because I used Final Cut Pro 10 on um, back like a decade ago to my 11 inch 2011 MacBook Air, and it ran it just fine. Like editing was fast. I mean, exports mm. took some time, but. Back then, I was probably only working with you know 1080p footage, so it's kind of like yeah. our expectations for software are progressively scaling with the computers that we use them with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which yeah, which is interesting. We're at, at a 4K kind of HDR point, and we're now starting to shoot 3D stuff for some of us. But I don't know like how much more our expectations will grow over time. Like I don't know, we're, we're probably not going to want. 8K footage uh, capturing because the file sizes will get so Yeah, massive. I don't know. Um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's interesting where, where it will go. I think the phone's getting better, better and better. And, yeah. And camera capabilities. It's, it, yeah. I don't know, though. With, with Apple, they tend to they tend to make even the base specs work. They do. You, so even on a low spec, I'd imagine they're still feature-proof for quite a while for doing all that video stuff. you just got to be a bit more patient, I guess. Yeah. So at some point you did purchase a new M2 iPad Pro, the 11 inch. Uh, when when was that? Was that three months ago, so or was that further it, back than that? It was January this year. Okay, uh, January February time. Yeah, into January I think it was basically. I work in IT by day. I'm a, a technical architect for uh, working in, in kind of IT industry software stuff, and I'm on a computer all day. So I've got a desktop set up, you know, mouse keyboard with a laptop plugged into it. And then in the evenings, I was doing all my hobby stuff, you know, all my passion stuff. Yeah. Um, and I was using the M1 MacBook. And what I found was I was picking up RSI-type um, symptoms, you know, as having hand strain and especially moving to the bigger phone as well. I had all these things going on at the same time. And, and so I suddenly realized, you know, I'm on a computer all day and then I'm doing it in the evenings too. So, and, so I thought, well, the iPad seems like the best kind of combination because it gives me that flexibility to be able to change up how I'm actually working. And I've always liked iPad OS. It was just um I think it was just mainly that Zoom stuff, you know, and all the job stuff that was that that like I said it pushed me over to the Mac again. So yeah, there's a there's a local store we have here here in the UK called CEX, which is like a I don't know if it's like a pawn shop in the States, but you can basically, you know, they they take DVDs and CDs and electronics and then they sell them, you know, used. And I had an iPhone 13 mini. I had an old iPad Pro, a 9.7. I had okay. a few things just sat in a drawer. Yeah, the original so iPad Pro, 9.7, yeah. Yeah, so I, so I looked online. My local store just happened to have this M2. It was about a year old. Um, and I traded all that stuff in, and I, I didn't pay much to get it in the end because I had an iPhone and an iPad. But it was only 128 gigabyte, which was my only reservation. It is a cellular version as well, which okay. I activated. Yeah. But... Um, 128 i was a little bit not sure about but because of the deal i got on it i thought well i'll just give it a go because it was an experiment to see if it helped with the Mm -hmm. uh you know with the rsi and and, you know it does seem better you know from switching over um and then that's kind of just rejuvenated my kind of um love i guess for ipad os and using the ipad again and at this point i don't see me going back to the mac 
anytime soon. Yeah. So it's been a good, you know, it's been a good few months with it so far. That's awesome. Yeah. And uh, doing music recording and photo editing and some light video stuff, has the 128 been a problem? Are you hooking up to external hard drives to offload like video footage? Um, or? The only times I've run into an issue is video. So if I'm recording on, on the iPad itself, which I do, yeah, um, or from my phone and pull it down from the cloud, you know, when I'm exporting those files out, I need to save them locally before I can put them somewhere. And yeah, I've, I've been close to the limit just because of that. Generally, it's okay, though. It's, it's not a problem other than that. Was 11-inch the only one that was available? Or did you say, I want the more iPad experience of the flexibility there? Yeah, I mean, I'd always liked that size. I've had a 12.9 before on the old, the original iPad Pro. Mm-hmm. That was 12.9, wasn't it? That it was, yeah. One. Yeah, so I had one of those. Um and I've been used to the the MacBook, so I didn't want anything kind of bigger than that. Yeah. Um, I saw the 11 was in stock, and I th- and it, it was the size that, like you know, I've, I was my last iPad. It just just got well with that mm-hmm. size because it's kind of it doesn't feel a huge amount different to the me to me now. So yeah, I I, I couldn't see me going to a bigger iPad. I, I quite like that size. That uh, yeah, and it's interesting for me. I, I could almost see myself downscaling at some point in the future to an 11 inch size class, mainly because of Apple Vision Pro. So when I want a thousand, you know, when <laughs> I've had windows <clears throat> and a bigger experience, I can work there. And then, yeah, you sure. know, and I'm not drawing because that, that, that's a different experience where you want a pencil and a, a big canvas to work with there. Yeah, the, the, it, the 12.9, my daughter's got a 12.9 um, and she does a lot of drawing on it. Mm-hmm. And this, I've used it for drawing with her and it's, it's really that like, size of screen is amazing, but I'm, I'm not an artist like she is, you know, I'm not, a yeah. draw, I don't draw particularly much on it. I make, I make notes with the pencil sometimes, but I tend not to, to be honest, I tend to just use, use it as a tablet. Yeah. So everyone has kind of different computing needs and you mentioned this is kind of your evening computer after you're done with your day job. Uh, what are some of the different tasks that your iPad need to do um, for you? So for me, it's just covering basic stuff like mail, watching video, um, browsing the web, but also encourage me to do more creative stuff. But the the, the, the kind of the, the the basic things are are those. I, I, you know, the photography, the guitar stuff. It needs it needs to cover a lot of bases for me. But the basic the basic stuff is yes, yeah, it's, it's just the mail and the. Um, mail and the. Browsing and you're and you're stuff. an Apple Mail user, right? Or. <laughs> I I realized, you know, I use no third party apps anymore. <laughs> I, do, I use all yeah. Apple stuff. I yeah, I shifted away was, for yeah. a lot of them too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I used I've, 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 I used to use quite a few different other apps, but as I've gotten older, I don't know. I've just given up and, and I just go with the default now. <laughs> I'm not a power user really of any app particularly. Yeah. Is there anything about the MacBook uh, form factor that you miss or the OS, I guess, as well? Um, I don't miss anything about the form factor, to be honest. Um, the iPad for me, because with the, with you know going out on day trips or going to see friends and family, with my camera bag, I'll just put the iPad straight in. Um, the laptop, I can do that too, but I just don't need the keyboard and trackpad at all. Um, Interesting. Yeah. So you, again, it's, yeah. it's the reason I bought it in the first place. Right. You know, flexibility. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want even the Magic Keyboard. I'm, I've no zero interest in getting one. Just because I don't want the trackpad, I don't want that that experience. Oh, that's so interesting to me. Yeah, because that that is the one. That's the thing that inspired me to upgrade to the new form factor. Because I was on the last, the second gen, the ProMotion and the the Lightning and whatever home button. Um, but it, it was the generation that had ProMotion and True Tone and all that stuff. So it's like I wasn't interested in the, in the redesign because it was the same screen technology basically. Sure. And then they added the Magic Keyboard. It's like. Oh, this kind of changes it into a whole different thing, and that's what got me into it. Yeah, this new yeah, I've used one. I mean, my, my again, my daughter's got the one with a twelve point nine, and it's a big heavy. It's heavy. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and but again, for me, it's you know, I'm not sort of like saying you know, if I wanted that form factor, I would just use a MacBook. It's not really that for me. It's part of the RSI and part of and I've I've experienced this in Apple stores when I've messed around with stuff in there as well. There's something about the trackpad and the angle of my hand on it. Oh, I see. So yeah, it just tend to set, set set my RSI off a little bit. So it, for me, if I got a magic keyboard, I, I'm defeating the object of for sure. 
of what I was trying to do, you know, from this experiment. Um, it's not that I particularly dislike the form factor. It's just it's not for me right now. Does the iPad morph into like a desk setup with an external monitor and keyboard and do you use? Like, it does. No? Yeah, it does. It, it does. Yeah, basically, mm-hmm. I've got a work. I work from home, so um, my work setup. I've got a you know it's all company supplied. I've got a twenty seven inch uh, Dell screen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then I've got a USB C dock and my work laptop. So I can just take that single USB and put it into the iPad, and then I have. I have my keyboard and mouse and everything then for the iPad. So I use a desk. I, I'm actually using it less than I thought I would. Mm-hmm. Um, the main re- well, answer, the main reason, but one of the reasons I went for the M series was to have the desk external desktop support. Yeah. Rather than just the two borders down the side, you know, when you, when you, yeah, that was not so, good. and, and that's been good, but I, I still struggle a little bit with stage manager. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's gotten better, but it's not. Uh, it's not all the way there. Um, so it's a mouse that you're using versus a trackpad uh, with your work setup. It is, yeah. Mouse. It's like one of those sideways mice. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure what they call them actually, but that's kind of how I describe okay. it. Yeah. yeah, the USB C has been really just transformative because like my wife has yeah. a work setup upstairs, and I can plug my iPad in there, or we have a setup down here where I can just plug in, and it's so different from the, the uh, before this. Uh, you know? Yeah, yeah, I love it, and and. You know, for those if for those cases, you know, and if I did want to, you know, needed to use the MacBook for something, again, I could just plug it into the same connector, and then I've got that full screen, that that on the same setup. So yeah, USB C has been amazing. I just wish, um, I know this is an iPad and Apple focused, yeah, kind of podcast, but like you know, the Dex, the Samsung Dex. Oh yeah, the phone that transforms. Their phone in and you have, uh, yeah, uh, that on your uh, a kind of an iPad OS on the phone. Mm-hmm. I know it's not really necessary because you have got the iPad, but that would be quite cool being able to plug the phone in with USB C now and, and have some sort of desktop experience on that. It would be. If I personally would want that, because it is nice to be able to just walk away with your phone and leave your computer uh, there. It is. Yeah. Um, but but being able um, to go to work yeah. with just your phone would be kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the more I think of it out loud, no, I probably wouldn't use it that much. <laughs> it just kind of seems cool. It does. Yeah, for sure. Any other accessories you're using with the iPad? Um. I think the only stuff really notable outside, because my iPad setup is pretty simple. It's just the iPad with a smart cover on it um, and the pencil occasionally, but my daughter's got it most of the time. But it's, it's the Katar stuff, which is probably more notable. From a, There's something called a Boss Katana Go, which is like a portable, <clears throat> um, kind of like a headphone amplifier. So it's about the size of probably an iPhone mini, if anyone's seen those. <laughs> and, and that plugs into your guitar kind of jack. And then you, that just USB C straight into your iPad, so you you you, you can effectively then use that as um, you know I, I can plug that in and use the front facing camera on my iPad and record myself playing, or I can put it into Logic Pro. Um, it's less than hundred pounds, so it's probably about eighty dollars something like that. If you if you play guitar or, or you're interested in recording guitar on an iPad, then I'd hundred percent recommend that. That's the Boss Katana Go. It's called. This is- Electric guitar or acoustic? Electric, yeah, it's, it's electric. Electric, yeah, because there's guitar. no jacks on an acoustic guitar, obviously, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, you can, you can have an electro acoustic. So I've got an electro acoustic guitar. Oh, okay. So it's an acoustic with a with a little um, with, with a jack on it, basically. Yeah. With a pickup inside it. Okay. So, and that feeds yeah, into electric. the iPad as an acoustic signal, or it's not MIDI, is it? No, no, it's it's just. I guess it's like just plug in your microphone in, but it, it, or you know. It is is effectively the 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 um the Katana Go is is the amplifier and it's got that the amplifier inside it, and then that just goes into your iPad via USB C and so it's a, it's the, it's the actual device which is doing the amp simulation I guess okay. so I'm not sure yeah. what signal or I'm not sure the technicalities of it in terms of the, you know how it's processing it but yeah yeah I'm curious um, how the sound quality is different from recording your guitar with like your Blue Yeti versus the direct feed is the quality well, of sound much different. Well, the main difference is with with this one is that it's got an amplifier built in, so it's got all the all the effects. So you know, if you wanted an overdriven sound like a rock and roll type sound guitar, or like an acoustic sounding guitar, or something with a lot of um, reverb, or you know, it's got all the effects built into it. So if I was recording obviously through the microphone, I'd need an external amplifier somewhere to amplify the signal, you know, to, to before it goes into there. So and you can live preview it. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it you can like. you can completely use Logic Pro, 
Um, yeah, yeah, I've been using it with Logic Pro a lot, and it's um, yeah, really impressed with it. I've only had it for probably about a month, but it's probably the easiest solution I've had so far to recording guitar on iPad. Yeah, and I really miss the smart cover. Like with that came out with the iPad two, that was such a like fun moment of oh, you just open it and it unlocks automatically because uh, we didn't care about passcodes back then. And now we're kind yeah. of back to that with Face ID a little bit where you just open it. Yeah. Box, right? The only thing I keep finding with my iPad is whenever I'm, because I don't know if I hold it with the, with the camera to the left, camera covered. You know, when, you, when you're trying to, if you double, double click the button, the power button to, to make a purchase or to download an app or something, nine times out of 10, mine will say camera covered because my hand, my palm and my hand is over that side holding it. So yeah, moving the camera up to the middle would be, or you know, on the edge, the longer edge. Yeah, um, maybe they'll do that. I'm not sure, but yeah, that is one that of the rumors that that's coming up, and hopefully they'll address that because it would be nice to have it there um, for sure, for multiple reasons, not just when you're on video calls, but as you said, sure. uh, holding it as you're unlocking the device. Yeah. 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 So uh, the Apple Pencil, uh, does that get much use for you at all on your iPad? More by like I said, my daughter really, to be daughter, honest. We yeah. kind of share it. Um, and, and that is nice with the magnetic one. You just pop it on and boom, yeah. it's paired. And Yeah, it's just the, yeah, on the, on the top. But to, to be honest, it's, um, we lose it quite a lot because who's got it? Have you got it? No, I haven't got it. So it's on a shelf somewhere you know, in the house. But she she uses um, Procreate a lot. So she has to show me how to do stuff now. <laughs> I, I tend, I, I might do some kind of, um, Tracing, so you know, I might I might import a photo, and then trace around it, and 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 you know, do use layers just to do some coloring, just to relax. But I'm no artist, and and I found that I've actually made the switch more to physical notebook notebooks now, rather than um, digital. So I'm I'm not, yeah, I kind of gave up, gave up kind of using my iPad as a digital notebook in that in that way. Yeah, I think I'm just got back to pen and paper. <laughs> Are you a fancy pen guy? Do you like found pens, or are you just using? Uh... Um, um, I use uh, the pen I use is from a company called Tactile Turn, which is an American company. I think they're based in Detroit. I think. Yeah. Um, but no, it, it's it uses just a gel refill. Nice. Yeah, it's not a fountain pen, but they're really well made. Nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. No gels quality. I mean, it's <laughs> better than ballpoint. At least, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, your work. Your day job stuff. Do you ever mm. use the iPad as like a VNC client to work from like the couch? Or is no, it I wish I could, but lockdown. What? what is all, yeah, it, well, it's more to do because a lot of the work I do is working with clients. So there's a lot of confidential stuff. Um, and we're only allowed to use data storage, which is via Office 365 for work. So, you know, I'd love to be able to. I started actually using it as a as my notebook when I first got the 12.9 all those years ago, but I can't put anything related to client data in there. So my notes are pretty useless when I was trying to write a to-do list, yeah. which I couldn't write what <laughs> customers I was working with. So yeah. unfortunately, no, I can't use, I can't use an iPad with work. Unfortunately, I so, wish I could. So photo editing is one of the core tasks that you do with the iPad. Yeah. And I, I love it for this. Like be able, uh, I have um, a Sony camera that's USB-C. So I can just plug that directly in to offload yeah, photos. Yeah. yeah. It's so nice, you know, just like I'm on the go yeah. and I can just do that. Well, yeah. well, I didn't actually know I could. To be honest, when you said USB C, what I do, I've just bought a just upgraded to a a sixty seven hundred a mirrorless uh, Sony, and I use USB C to charge it. I didn't even think to test if I could go because what I do is I've got a, a memory card reader, USB C memory card reader. I might plug it into the iPad and see what it does. Yeah. I've never actually tried that it, for my Sony. It does, definitely works. Uh, it, it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna try that after the call. <laughs> yeah, no, it's great, and um, you have to put in whatever the drive mode in the camera, what, um, and it works. Yeah, um, for me at least. And the ones I, I'm hoping iPad OS 18 adds raw support for my Sony camera. It's currently not there, so I have to like throw it in the Lightroom and export those as the DNGs to work with the that mm. on uh, Photomator's my app of choice. Same. Yeah, I use Photometer, but I'm quite a... S- <laughs> I don't use RAW, particularly. You don't? I okay. know that's like maybe a sin, I don't know, but... The files are too big. I mean, it's... I know they are, but the thing is, I I think a long time ago, I got a friend who, who you know, goes to quite a few air shows with and, and yeah. do some aviation stuff. 
and he's got a big cannon and he he shoots him raw and jpegs at the same time okay yeah um and i and i always thought it was kind of overkill for me because yeah raw is good where you can bring those details back where you need Mm -hmm. them you know but my i'm not a professional so i thought well actually i'll save the space yeah because it is substantial like my photo library i have to be very careful it's like oh that's getting big (laughs) exactly so i just consoled myself with well i'll just shoot jpeg and if they, if I'm going somewhere where maybe the lighting isn't that good or somewhere I think I might want to be able to pull that stuff up, you know, get more detail, then I'll do it. But I very rarely shoot in RAW. I just literally go out for the day, shoot everything in JPEG, import into um, onto the iPad via the, via the card reader. And then I just use the Photos app to uh, favorite the ones that I want to edit later on. And then I'll either edit them in Photos directly or anything that I want to do a little bit more with, I'll put into, like you said, Photomator and do some stuff in there. But generally, it stays in photos these days. Interesting. Uh, what what kind of um, photography do you mainly do? Um, well, I do landscapes, um, wildlife, and aviation mainly. Okay. Um, yeah. I live in kind of a rural area in the UK, so we've got mm-hmm. quite a lot of um, nice walks and stuff in the countryside. So I could, uh, in landscapes tends to be the main just because that's around me. Um, and there's, there's a big kind of U.S. Air Force base near us as well. So they was well, RAF base, but U.S. Air Force run it, RAF Fairford, it's called. Um, and they get the, the stealth bombers and the B-52s up there quite a lot. So yeah, it tends to be a mix of stuff that's around me. Um, you had some amazing red panda photos the other week. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was um, a, a, zoo, a zoo that's fairly close to us, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong with with those guys. No, and it was lucky as well. It was quite quiet actually when we went, and we'd left it quite late. And it's you know like most of the time you go and they're asleep. Um, they were actually out and about when we went because it was quite quiet and it was later on in the day. Um, we Do you have a good find... um, yeah, go on. zoom on your lens or how are you getting um, that close? Yeah, well, I've got a three fifty mil uh, telephoto that I recently that I recently bought. Uh, I took that to that trip actually. I think that was the first time I used it. it was was that day. Because uh, I've only had the camera for about less than two months, so uh, yeah, my daughter's got my Canon, so it was an excuse for me to upgrade. Then <laughs> I've been I've been after a mirrorless for a while. I wanted to bring bring the form factor down a little bit, you know, make it uh, carry something a little bit lighter. Yeah, and there is a there is a difference definitely between mirrorless and not. Yeah, mine. I forget the model name, um, but it's it's a smaller kind of um, three quarters, I think, kind of size class. Uh, okay. But yeah, it, it, it's amazing what a difference from iPhone to like just you know, a, a quote unquote real camera is because it's a much different experience. Like yeah. getting the bokeh and like not yeah, having yeah. the uh, not having the iPhone just like m- make any shot work because it really it's kind of magical what the iPhone does. Like when you're actually using a real camera, you have to do some work, you know. Yeah, the, the, I've been. I've been impressed with the 15 Pro, actually. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd had the 13. It was mainly because of the size of the phone. You know, I'd had a, I think it was an 11 Pro for a while. And then I went 11 Pro 11. I went to the 11 from the 11 Pro, which is a bit strange. because I. Um, and then I went, I think it was to the 13 Mini and then I had a 13 for a little bit. And I'd always thought the 13, I thought, well, I don't need anything more than that. It's, it's, it's a really good camera. But when I picked up the 15 Pro, I've been, I was kind of reminded how much I missed the telephoto. But also... Yeah. Even though it's three times, not the five times you get on the Max, I've, I've been really impressed with the 15 Pro. It's probably the most impressive camera upgrades I've had for a while. I think on a phone, for sure. Yeah, and I'm uh, I'm guilty of shooting a lot of uh, spatial imagery these days. <laughs> There's that new app that lets you sp- shoot spatial photos on the iPhone, which oh, has been yeah. fun to play around with. Yeah, I've done a few of those. Um, again, it you know it depends what happens here in the UK with it, but. Um, I've been shooting them here and there just to, if I've forgotten it's even there. Yeah. You know, cause I, obviously I haven't, I haven't, I can't see them. So like you can, so you're probably more in a habit of, of it. Yeah. There's a lot less incentive to shoot it. If you can't preview it the next day and see, Oh, that's exactly. why I'm shooting the stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly why. And, and I'm, you know, I'm sure if I do get one or when they come out here, I'll get in the habit of doing it more, but, um, for now, now I'm, I'm I'm not recording much in special. Yeah, and it's interesting because you can't really t- edit that stuff quite yet. Like the photos, you just can't crop it or do anything with it. 
Um, mm. And the videos, I think you can just trim them. There's been rumors that Final Cut's going to be updated to support editing that stuff, but that has not quite happened yet. So we'll see. Yeah, it would make sense for them, you know, given they created exactly created it, yeah to be able to to be able to do it in their own software. So one of the things that you have with the M2 iPad Pro that I don't with the M1 iPad Pro is Apple Pencil with Hover. Yeah. Um, has this been something you've messed around with in photo editing? I think Photomator supports some of this stuff. Not, not really, to be honest. Um, the only time I was, I was thinking about the question, and, and the only time I, I, re- I remember using it is when I've been using the native photo, um, yeah, photos app, and mm-hmm. you do markup. Yeah, I was, I was kind of sketching over a design, uh, a phone design for like a, a competition thing here, and and. And it was good being able to see where the marker was going down before I actually put the put the pen on the glass. Um, but no, I, I should probably look at Photomator and look at what I can do with it. To be honest, because all I've ever the only thing I've ever kind of seen it used as is like it feels like a right click, but in that way that you hover it and it you know it pops up. It doesn't pop up options. Yeah, it's and it, and based on I would say my usage of it, I don't see much support for it in other apps. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wouldn't say it's a feature that I would miss if I didn't have it, put it that way. Yeah. It's certainly well, nothing to upgrade for. Right. When you do go to Photomator, what are kind of the edits that you find most useful in there? Um, for me, I always mess around with all the AI. No, is it AI? The AI, machine AI? learning, I think they call it. Or yeah. the machine. They call it machine learning, yeah. yeah. The, all the, the, um, and it doesn't, I don't find it does an amazing job. When you, I like the kind of you know you can up the resolution. Yeah, that's and pretty you, remarkable. That's, that's really you get good. A, getting old photos and just like setting yeah. it through that's like wow. But that's really good. But what I find is you know you can get it to do a rough kind of edit on your photos, mm-hmm. like a bit like like in photos, and then you can say yeah, the automatic one, the little yeah. And I don't find that to be very good. Yeah, I use it just to see what it comes up with, and then I'll take it from there, kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I tend to only use it for the super resolution, the D noise as well. That stuff's quite good. It's a really good app, and and I I, I use I I was using it on the Mac as well before I went back to the iPad. Uh, it's not called Photomator, is it on the iPad? It's uh, Pix- Pixelmator, isn't it? Yeah, Pixelmator Pro, I think. Pro, yeah, yeah. Which so I, I would love if they would bring it. that full feature set to the iPad one day. Yeah, I don't I don't really know the differences too much to be honest. I, the stuff I used, I certainly you know, didn't feel like I was missing anything. Yeah, for photo editing, uh, Photomander's got everything you need. I think it's when you get into kind of working on, I don't know, like advertisements and like creating images, you know, from scratch kind of stuff. Yeah, okay. Um, anything else in the photo editing world um, worth mentioning? No, I mean, I mean, for me, it, it, it's... I just love editing photos on the iPad. It just feels... It feels more intuitive, but it's also more fun than, than I, I find than using the Mac. Um, the, the the apps again. I, I'm quite a basic user when it comes to using photos, using you know the basics of Photomator. But give me an iPad any day to to, to do photo stuff. Yeah, and then uh, video editing. Um, yeah, we now have a lot of options. Actually, we beyond LumaFusion, we have DaVinci Resolve and Final Cuts on the iPad. What what did you settle on using? Final Cut. I I was using. I actually I actually used iMovie for a bit. Oh, we also have um, iMovie. Yeah, I always yeah, forget about iMovie because it's like yeah, yeah. But yeah. I, I I was using it fine, and and Final Cut had come out, and I was messing around with it, and I've only got a little small YouTube thing. It's not mm-hmm. you know, no ambitions to 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 grow it into something really apart from you know it's just a bit of fun, and um, I think I went to Final Cut Pro because one my daughter was messing around with it. So I could see, and she, you know, she figured it out, and, and I thought it looked quite interesting. But I, I quite like the option, the, the extra options for putting titles on on the screen, and some extra music options and intros. All basic stuff I do is not nothing complicated. Um, I'm very underusing it. I would say I could probably go back to iMovie, um, but they're solid apps. I mean, I was quite impressed with that. Probably doesn't got all the the features of the desktop, but I'm coming from. I never used it on the desktop, so I don't know what I'm missing. Right, out you're coming from sense. iMovie, so it's like exactly, yeah, it's massive to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never. If I used it on the desktop, I might be. This feels like a baby version. I don't know. But <laughs> yeah, 
given but it's, it's I got have. Yeah, what, what I think I it has multicam editing and all that stuff if you wanted to do stuff like that, which multicam is always so fun to me. You have multiple cameras running and you just like yeah. tap the one you want to edit to and I love that. So I yeah, I, I even I've not used it in desktop mode either. I've I've only ever just edited on the iPad. I might give it a go, just plugging it into the desktop set setup and using the external screen maybe as a as the preview window, which I've not done. I've I've only ever used it on the iPad. Does the subscription? It doesn't. It's just for iPad, right? It doesn't give you yeah. the Mac access at all. Yeah, and, and I would quite like a subscription where you could get Logic Pro and. Um, Final right, Cut maybe Pro eight bucks one. a month for both or something. Yeah, it's quite expensive when you do both. So I, I tend to do it monthly and just turn it on and off as I'm free. Okay, yeah, you I was unsure. Like you have ebbs and flows, don't mm-hmm. you, of creativity? It's like, oh, I fancy doing video for a bit, then I'll go in and subscribe to, the, to that. Or if I feel I fancy playing the guitar stuff, I'll go in and, and log- use Logic Pro, which is a good app. It's really solid. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, yeah, I wasn't sure if the yearly was um worth it for you because it is a little not bit less me, but if you don't use it enough then it's like not yeah really i probably it. use it like three months of the year or something like that gotcha. you know, yeah. it's, it, it's, it works out more cost efficient for me just to do it like that gotcha and with logic do you do so much and with logic that is month to month as well you don't do enough guitar stuff where that's worth it not no it's not worth it for me because i'm the guitar stuff i'm getting back into after a bit of a break I may I may go yearly if I carry on you know recording stuff, but uh, at the moment I'm I'm kind of what I wanted to really do was, given I've used GarageBand in the past, again on iPad, I want to see if I'm getting if I'm using those extra features, rather than just say you know they're good apps to use and Logic Pro is what I used on the Mac, but if I can get away with iMovie and not pay the subscription, I would probably be a oh I sorry um GarageBand then I then I think I'll probably be okay, but. Again, it's just messing around with them. Yeah. It's all pretty basic stuff I'm doing. Have you messed around with any of the icon- iPad first kind of features, like the jog wheel and writing on the videos with the pencil? Or writing, definitely. Yeah. I've used that a lot. Because what, what's the style of the videos that you're actually creating for your YouTube channel? They're kind of um, mainly guitar stuff, these. I've done so basically, I was because I got a lot of different interests, like a lot of people. And I know YouTube, tend, people tend to have, oh, I've got a channel that's just about this, or I've got a channel that's just about games, or I've got a channel that's just about tech, I've got a channel that's just about, you know, whatever. I just check it all in one because I'm not really taking it as I want to be a YouTuber type thing, you know. So mine are kind of a mix of me playing guitar with a front-facing camera on the iPad, playing along to a Tool song or something like that, or me playing my own stuff. Um, or it might be a case review, iPhone case review, or it might be what I think about the iPad. I haven't done one yet. Maybe I'll do one about what my iPad use, three three months of iPad use. But my default state is blogging and writing. So for me, getting stuff off my at my head, you know, into out there is 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 blogging is where I land. That's my default. That's where I've always fallen back to. And video for me always takes a little bit of extra work, which is why if you look at the videos, mine are very there's a lot more shorts than there is actual videos. Because I, I want it just quick and be creative. I don't want to have to think about the script and edit. And I've tried that in the past. Quite like back in two thousand and eight, I, I was all in on the YouTube stuff, um, and I just got overwhelmed by it in the end. Just, the just uh, is, shed, it's a lot of work. Just, like it's it's a lot of work. Yeah, so you're dealing with the audio, the visuals, thumbnails, like all these different things are very important. It is, yeah, and, and I'm not a huge fan of where YouTube's gone. In terms of, you know, the stuff that gets to the top, yeah, you know, the um, exploding head emoji, you know, faces or the hands on cheeks emoji, you know, oh, faces. Yeah. I, you know, like the, I gave my credit card to my two year old, and get put them in the Apple Store. This is what happened, though. You know that sort of stuff. You know, I, I, even with the guitar stuff, when I was when I was doing guitar stuff back in, you know, kind of twenty ten, it was very much. I'll review this guitar or I'll review this pedal. Mm-hmm. But even the guitar stuff now has gotten a bit more like that mainstream stuff where it's just like my five most expensive guitars I own or I spent a $10,000 at the guitar store or whatever, you know, and I'm like, <sighs> so they're all trying to get the algorithm. You know, it's, it's there, you know, they're, they're going with the algorithm, you know. But um, so for me, uh, coming back to the content, it's low 
kind of, I'm not saying low quality, but low um, output hassle. Yeah, yeah, low hassle for me to put stuff out there and, and just stuff I enjoy doing, nothing serious in that way. Yeah, one of the videos that I did, I think it was last summer, the summer before, that just blew up was I just did a quick demonstration of the then in beta feature of turning your voice into like a computer voice. And I was just demonstrating, okay. you know, how to do that and what it sounded like. And that video got so many views. It was just a simple screen <laughs> capture from the iPhone I upload without any real editing, yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. it's hit and miss. Yeah, it's it's hard to predict, and and I think that's you know you know when I like I said when I was doing it, I just got burnt out by it, and and I know people that that do it for a living, and and but I know how many hours they have to work. Yes, and it's relentless. Yeah, I used to do um, a lot of um, videos about the Nintendo Wii U and 3DS back cool. in the day, <laughs> and it's very funny because every once in a while, like I got a comment on a video that was like ten years old or whatever. Uh, sharing how to like connect your like Wii U with YouTube and whatnot, and that functionality, I guess, doesn't work. And I got a comment: this no longer works. Uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah, that, that happens with yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's interesting. I've had it go the other way, where as well, where where like someone will read. I've had I've, I've had comments before where someone will read the blog, mm-hmm. which will maybe link up, or they've got to the blog from the YouTube channel, yeah, or they've got the other whichever way around it's been. But they've said, "Oh, can you do a video about this article?" So, like, I might have written huh. something on how to do this on a blog post, and I've had a request on it saying, "Could you do a video on this?" Interesting. So it's interesting now how yeah. all those link those. Li- I've not really had that a lot in the past, but this last kind of six months or so, I've had a lot of people going between the blog and, That's and the super YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why what switched that, but I mean, people people do like people are lazy. They like those just watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's that's kind of why mine are mainly shorts. I think because it's kind of how to plug. I think I did one about how to plug record guitar on an iPad, something like that. And it's just a short. I just got my phone out, did it, and and that's what I enjoy, and that's why I find creative. I don't find the long form stuff creative at all for me. Yeah. So uh, something I love about Lumen Fusion is the added support for using the extra RAM and the iPad Pros to export video in the background. Um, yeah. And I'm always nervous to do that because I always jump right <laughs> back to the app after like a minute or so. Uh, do you know, does Final Cut, does it just instantly shut down if you try to do that? I was going to try it before the call and, and I didn't. I ran out of time, but I wouldn't do it either. I would. I, whenever I've done it, I just leave it run. It should do, given it's Apple. Right. But yeah. Yeah, stage manager has been not kind of tried a, it. Right. I'd be too nervous. I'm single app, like, you know, I'm I, you get used to the iPad, you know. My muscle memory is like you're doing something that's single use. Um I don't multitask a lot. I don't stage manager on the iPad itself. I, I do it only for the desktop. So I'm very single for single app use. Right. Yeah. Go grab your coffee while uh, the video is exporting. <laughs> yeah. And the M2 is so quick. It's just like this, the videos I was doing are fairly basic anyway, but they, they export pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah. You just mentioned you're not into long form. So that would also make sense. No. And it exports quicker than my, my air does. Yeah. So M2 <laughs> versus M1. So yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I always found stage manager very useful if I want to just have that kind of in the background sort of as I'm doing stuff. Um, but generally, yeah, I still prefer the split screen usage when I'm just on my iPad overall. Like split screen, slide over. I, it's so natural and fluid to me at this point doing that. Yeah, I, I keep thinking I'm I'm underusing the interface in that way. My daughter uses Stage Manager on the iPad all the time. Hers is stuck in Stage Manager all the time. Oh, that is fascinating. And and I and I use it, and I'm like, uh, well, you do. <laughs> it feels slow to me doing it that way. But that's just the way she uses that. She's good. She, she likes it that way. Uh, Twelve. Yeah, different people, you know, think you're, you know, thing, yeah. Different generation, yeah. She's grown up with the iPad. I mean, she, but I didn't show her to use Stage Manager. It was, um, she's, she always had um, use of an iPad, one of one of ours, and myself and my wife's. Um, but we got one for Christmas, you know, the M2 12.9. Yeah. As her main machine, she doesn't use a machine other than Does, that. Uh, she, um, so she has the Magic Keyboard as well, you mentioned. Is she super yeah, yeah, fast yeah, with and, the virtual keyboard if that's not on? It's, it's always attached. It's always attached, okay. It's always attached. Yeah, she never takes it off. Even when drawing and stuff? 
Sometimes, yeah, no, it's probably about half, 50 50, probably. Yeah, okay. she does keep it on when she's drawing sometimes, but yeah, interesting. It, okay, yeah, 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 it's 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 interesting seeing seeing kids use an iPad, um, it, especially when they try and touch your laptop. <laughs> yeah, we have all the uh baggage of growing up with Macs, and then this is a, a new thing versus that's what you start with, it's so different. Yeah, I think the iPad's got a good future with, with the you know generation coming through now. Um, yeah. It's either phones or iPads. It's not a lot of, fr- you know, when when she's gaming with her friends, you know, she's she's usually on on our on the Xbox, but all her friends are on phones. So, so you know, I think I think I don't know. I, I, it's, this isn't. I, I think iPad will do strong. I think it's going to do well in the future with with generation growing up. I'm hoping I'll have Apple keep up with it. I hope <laughs> in so terms too. of functionality. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you mentioned Logic for recording. So, what kind of music are you recording? Is it uh, covers, stuff you're writing, um, improvising? Uh, it's my own stuff. Your own stuff, okay. Yeah, if I'm recording stuff, it'll just be kind of instrumental guitar mm-hmm. music. Um, YouTube, I, I'll just do little covers, some little short videos. Yeah, you know, play through, like I said, a Tool song, one of my favorite bands, or Nine Inch Nails, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I, it's something I'm trying to get back into. To be honest, it's something I didn't for a long time, on and off, but yeah. As as I've got a bit more time these days, I'm I'm gonna try and get back into it. Like a lot of creative projects, you know, they go away for a little bit and they come back. That's very cool. Away. Yeah, I was a music major back in college, and I just don't have time for any of that stuff anymore. <laughs> so, it, it, yeah. It, yeah, I mean, I was like that for a long time. Yeah, you know, as kids growing up and that, you know. But as they get more independent and yeah, um, you get a bit more time back. So that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> that's cool. With Logic, do you add like drums in the background or anything, or is it just straight guitar? Sometimes, sometimes. I mainly it's an area that I want to get better at when, as well as I go back into using Logic Pro. Um, I used to have like a Zoom um, little Zoom recorder that had drums built in, so I would I would set a drum track going and play a, 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 over the top of it. With Logic, I tend to record the guitar first, but it's always hard putting a a beat behind the guitar you've always played. You've always yes. played, so. Um, it's something I'm 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 kind of actually messing around with over the last few months, and I will be going forward is is messing around with kind of the bass and the drums and all that stuff in Logic Pro and just going over the top of it. But it's 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 it's, it's all learning, which is good. That's one of the main reason I was trying to use Logic, to be honest, is mm-hmm. to try and learn some new skills. Yeah, Logic is one of those apps I've just not touched. Like I've never had a need for it because I I'm for music on the more composition end where I'll be in Sibelius or Dorico and okay. those kind of tools of writing versus capturing performances, you know? Mm. So you're a big John Williams fan, I'd imagine. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah, Jerry same. Goldsmith, John Williams. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, it's amazing. That guy is still doing conducting concert 91 is it now i think he's nine he's born 32 february 32 so what's that i think he's 90 91 2020 he'd be 92 if that math is right 92 yeah i knew he's in his 90s yeah um yeah he's he's amazing he's he's yeah he's just amazing yeah i I wonder if that indian jones movie will be his last score he's gonna write or if anything else is depends if a new star wars film comes out i guess but or if a new uh, Spielberg, uh, it's as if Spielberg has another movie up his sleeve. Because I, th- yeah. I think he could. I know we're going off on a tangent here. But we are. Star yes. Wars is another. Th- Star Wars is another thing I write about. I must block so, <laughs> um, Like with the new, the, the new stuff coming out in Daisy, Ris- Daisy Ridley being back in, being back in one as a lead. I could see him coming back to doing that one, maybe because I know he's a he's a big Daisy Ridley fan, and he, he love you know doing that one for Force Awakens and that. Yeah. So. Maybe he'll come back for that, but it's amazing. You know, he's still going. It's just, yeah, his library is uh, just discography is just incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's un, it's unmatchable, really. To be honest. Yeah. Oh man. So, anything else in the music realm before we move on? Um, no. Again, I think it's it's like I said on the photography stuff. It's it's using it for. It can feel a little clunky sometimes using Logic Pro if you're used to it on, on, on the Mac, mm-hmm. just in terms of you got you're using the screen obviously instead of the keyboard. But I think it it's it's I definitely feel more creative using using the iPad for, for music stuff personally. Um I'm not sure why. I think I, some of it might be just the fact that I use a desktop and a laptop in work. So it's that break from this device for work, this device for 
personal and creative. So it might be just a psychological thing around that. I'm not sure. <laughs> when you're doing the guitar recording, are you at the desk setup or like or like your iPad's in the smart keyboard or smart um, folio thing? Is it uh, propped up in any way to like? Um, I tend to take it away from the office. So the home office, you know, my office here is for obviously my work, my day job. Um, I do use the desk setup sometimes, but not the desktop set, as in I don't plug it into the dock. I just plug it into the iPad. But no, most of the time I'll just take it upstairs into our kind of living space and I'll just have it sat next to me on the, on, on the sofa, you know, just on its, but not even propped up sometimes. Okay. Interesting. Um, just laying pretty, down. Pretty laid back in terms of where it is, you know, as long as I'm on the floor, I tend to be okay. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you had uh, different stands and different rooms that you like to No, have. I'm not that fancy, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I literally pick up the iPad, pick up the little Katana Go and uh, my guitar, and then I just, just plug it in. Nice, yeah. For your blogging, yeah, what uh, apps and things are you using for that? Um, I really only ever use one, and that's Jetpack, mm-hmm. which is for WordPress. And that's, so, that's an app? Right, I know. I know the term jetpack because I have WordPress, but I'm not quite sure what that all is exactly. So the WordPress app got changed into Jetpack app. Um, it's the same app. It's obviously moved on a little bit, but it's the same basic. See your statistics. Write posts, and and my writing is so short form that I I don't really have a list of stuff I want to write about. It just goes in my head, and I just write it out and, and 80 percent of it is on my phone to be honest um so that app for me is is all i need i don't I, i've tried down apple notes and then copying it and pasting it into wordpress and stuff but it's just an extra step i don't need okay I just so you just write directly in, in there yeah i just treat my blog like social media in a way so i don't really post that much on mastodon but i write more on my blog so i just kind of see my default, if I want to share something, is just going into my phone, into the Jetpack app, and write something up and <laughs> post it. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Apart from the freelance stuff, which the freelancing work, which you know, I've done, I've written for like Cult on Mac and um, some, so yeah, future publishing stuff here in the UK. Tech Radar is another one. I'll do those in something like um, AI. Okay. IA. Sorry. Yeah, I, I always confuse it too. Right. Yeah, IA writer. Yeah. <laughs> IA writer. Um, but I, I don't tend to freelance too much these days. But I will use that for, for for that stuff. Okay. And I guess uh, the final category. Oh, uh, one thing I was curious about: when you post to the blog, is it just automatically set up to share the Mastodon when it's kind of live, or do you manually post that stuff? No, no, it's all set up to do it from automatically. Okay. Yeah, I don't need to do anything. It, it was something that WordPress brought in quite a few months ago now, so I just set that up instead of sharing to the old place that we don't talk yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, the Mastodon integration. I was glad to see that there. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And then the final category of your computer usage is just general productivity, mail, and I'm not sure if you yeah. use reminders. What kind of what kind of apps do you use outside of the creativity stuff? Um, all my stuff is mainly Apple stuff, Apple okay. apps. So my I moved my to do system and all my journaling over to a paper notebook and pen because my my mind goes a hundred mile an hour and. Um, I try and slow myself down. Yeah. And and using pen and paper has been amazing for me. Yeah, I um, love so uh, journaling with pen and paper. Um, reminders, I still want that digital for whatever reason. Like, it's nice. It doesn't thinking. work for me anymore. Reminders is broken. Huh. Is that what the app's broken? I can't get anyone to fit. I can't get... I've, I've been raising feedback on it. Huh. It's basically what... Literally I'm, broken? I like... Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> um, it, <laughs> if, if, like, it doesn't sync properly for a start. Oh, no. Between Mac and, and and iOS, but I had an issue where no, when it, and it still does it every now and again. I'll go in and check it where I'll create a list and I'll create items, and they randomly just disappear. Wow. Um, okay. It's really weird, and it's happened on every single version. I don't want to go into the beta to test it. I can't be bothered because I don't really use to do apps now. But the app is actually broken. I think there's something broken in iCloud, and and I just. You know, there's like some. I haven't put any weird characters in there or nothing. I don't know. I don't know why it's broken. It's just. It's... That's so frustrating. But no, I use things. I was using things anyway before that. Yeah, many years ago, I was cursed with some corrupted thing on my phone. It was the original iPhone SE, 
it refused to back up the phone no matter what I did. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it always came back with some error and I thought my iCloud account was corrupted and whatnot. Mm. And I, I don't know. I think eventually I just gave up and just like, okay, I'm going to start from scratch. And and the issue would come back on that phone. I think the probably the phone was part partially the blame, but I don't know. there, there are random, some weird yeah. things that can happen with iCloud for sure. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It, I don't know. I, I Like I said, it, it's one th- if I was using reminders, I would have been um, raising tickets or whatever, you know, with, with Apple yeah. to try and get it fixed. But I've just let it go now because I was using things and I've just dropped off productivity apps, you know, in terms of my to-do list. I still use, obviously, mail, calendar, notes, MI3. Um but has I don't free, use third-party apps. Has Freeform entered your life at all? Have you tried to mess around with that? I've all? tried, but I think it would be useful if I used it for work. But um, not being able to use the iPad for work, it's kind of... I don't have a lot of people really I collaborate with in terms yeah. for projects. I tried it for, like, mind mapping and this kind of stuff, but no, it's a nice app, but I just I don't really have a use for it. Yeah, I'm the same. It seems cool, but I don't have a, yeah. a good use of it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it looks quite cool on the Vision Pro as well from what I've seen. Yeah, the collaboration there is really wild. You can be in a spatial persona session and all the people, all five of you, can be writing on the board simultaneously in just yeah, this cool. collaborative kind of nature. It's it's kind of neat. Yeah, it's very neat. Yeah, yeah, so that sounds really cool. Any other apps or things of note? I think we've covered a lot of the bases for, the, for, for what I'm doing, I think. Okay, like I said, I'm not, I realized going through this, I'm not really a power user of any particular app. Um, there are apps out there that anyone I could really think of, which might be useful, again, if you're a guitar player, is Ultimate Guitar do a guitar tablature app. I think it's just called Tabs, but it's, it's run by a company called Ultimate Guitar. They, they've got a website as well with loads of guitar tablature on there. And learning music on the iPad screen is actually quite nice, uh, much better than a than a Mac, I would say. Um, I, I really like learning, you know, guitar tablature and, guitar and songs via the iPad. Yeah. Um, something I want to mention is AI tools can blow my mind sometimes. Uh, uh, I, yeah. I had to clean up this very horrific audio recording um, for Vision Pros. And I thought, oh, this is going to be unusual audio. Um, I didn't really realize because the way it sounded to me was great because the Vision, uh, we were doing a, basic, a spatial persona call. So okay. they were on their Vision Pros capturing with their iPhone just in front of them. And unbeknownst to me, is they were kind of outside in a very noisy environment with music and cars and okay. all sorts of rubbish. And my normal denoising tools just couldn't handle the myriad of different things. It wasn't like a constant mm. memory. There's just a bunch of just stuff. And I found this tool and you know, it, it's called like la la dot AI, I think. Okay. And it turned that audio into just their voice, just isolated. Sounds great. So and that I, um, they have a website, but I download their whatever iPad app and it, save the audio i was blown away by that and um so i'll be very curious to see what apple does this summer with uh, making that that kind of tools available to everyone because that costs some money and that'd be nice to have you know that include with the icloud plus subscription or something maybe maybe yeah i mean i i quite often i know it's not strictly it's you know i know they call it machine learning but yeah you know i i, I search the photo app all the time so, you know, if there's a receipt that I needed or if, like the other day I was looking for when I bought a watch and I just searched for the watch brand in my photos app and it just got me the picture of my watch, highlighted the, the watch brand. Um, I use that all the time. That's, that's amazing. It's so but, good, that, that search. Yeah. Yeah. The AI stuff, you know, the, the main reason, the main thing I do is just mess around creating really strange images with the um, the Microsoft one, which I can't remember, image generator or creator i think it's called i can't remember the and uh, you know just random darth vader on the beach eating on ice cream type things you know just messing around but i'm the standard of what i can do sometimes but um i've not really found a a, a use for them particularly for my for my use anyway yeah uh, apart from that messing around with images having a bit of fun <laughs> in the the photos app i am so delayed they added the pet ability yeah, that's right. 
it is so yeah. nice because I've got this little kid and, and now she's older and it's it's so cool like just having all those grouped together and the memories that it'll generate yeah. with the pets and stuff. It's so cool. Yeah, so you know, I've got childhood dogs on and we've got a we've had a couple of cats. We got one now and um, you know, they've all got their own little category with their name on it and stuff. So yeah, it's all cool. Yeah, I love all that. But yeah, the search is so good. Like I'll search for I uh, just search for iPad and just try to find old pictures of different iPads of the years or whatever. And... Yeah, and I think you can search by I don't think you can I, I did something the other day and I don't know if I was searching for a particular phone, but it was almost it wasn't bringing up like a model number. I couldn't I, I don't think I could say like find me iPhone no, Pro, it'll do that for something which popped up, which was like a model. I yeah, you can was, search for different phones it. for camera for photos it took with it, perhaps, but not the actual phone. I think. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember what it was. Now it was. It came to me after the call. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so you're on the M2 iPad Pro. Yeah. Um, what if anything would inspire you to upgrade outside of more storage, perhaps one day? <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be one of them. Storage. No, for me, I think the only thing I could think of which mine. It, I find missing sometimes is, that, and this is never going to happen, is an extra USB C port. You say never. I, I, I can't see them putting no, them on an iPad. I, Not, you know, well, maybe if they do Pro Pro or Ultra or whatever they want to call it, yeah. maybe. But I, that's the only thing I miss because, like at the moment, you know, I'm recording my Yeti into mm-hmm. the iPad. Yeah. But I don't have any power going into the iPad. There's no pass through. And the guitar stuff, the Katana. Um, that won't power the iPad. There are certain interfaces that won't power the iPad. Right. Um, I don't want an SD card, re- uh, SD slot, or anything on it. I just no. thought I would like another, just one, just an extra. And it'd be very nice if it was on the opposite side as well. That'd be great. Uh, yeah, just, just I can't see them ever doing it, but yeah, an extra one would be nice. I, the screen doesn't bother me. I think the screen's great on on, on the one I've got. Um, because if they move the camera. Up in the top middle. Oh, camera, that was when we talked about. Well, yeah, they, if they move that, it seems like they now have space at that other side to put something in there. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like they want to keep the keep it for the Mac. You know, even though they yeah. call it a Pro, it's not. It is a Pro for me, and I think he's a Pro for yourself. You know, yes. a lot of people the iPad, but if you want to, I don't know. I'd love it, but I don't see them making it. It's not a Surface, is it? You know, Microsoft Surface have them. They have multiple ports on them. Right. Um, maybe. I don't know. I, I think it depends this year. I, I, do you think they're going to bring out a Pro, Pro, Pro Ultra, whatever this year? I, I, don't. I don't know. I don't see it. I don't think that's happening. No. It'll I think be the maybe iPad is $100 be. more expensive for whatever reason of Apple is slowly raising prices. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see me. Well, but yeah, the Thunderbolt really upgrading. changed what I can do with this thing because I plugged into the Thunderbolt dock and now I have all these ports and power and it's great, yeah. but that's at the desk. Like when I'm out and about, it's just the one port, which isn't great. Um, yeah. The Magic yeah. Keyboard adds the charging port at least, so that is nice. Yes, you get two then, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I keep forgetting about that. I see, again, when I talk about my daughter, she's, she, she'll she plug hers in down there and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, and I forget it's got a charger on yeah and yeah. apple smartly put the port on the opposite side from the ipad so you have one each side um so you can charge in either side which is nice yeah I, I, yeah like i said i'm not bothered about screen technology particularly this one's good enough oled is i don't really need oled on the ipad Just no i mean it's <laughs> nice to have um i like the mini led on the 12.9 that's very nice um especially it's got the reference display mode i can throw it in for photo editing which is kind of cool that's one thing I've not really messed around with too much on. On again, you know, we've got a twelve point nine in the house, but it's not mine. So yeah, nicking <laughs> <laughs> that to do my photo editing. Right. Uh, any hopes for iPad OS eighteen coming up? Couple of well, widgets, some some kind of consistency because the placement I'm talking about. So, you know, like when you go horizontal and vertical. Yeah, you can place uh, them differently on iPad. They, you... they always seem to forget. Like if I put like a widget top right, top left on the, on uh-huh. the horizontal and I can, uh, and it'll always stay there. But, you know, when you, if, you, if, if that widget is top left and you go vertical, my, the widget will drop down to the bottom. If I move it up to the top and I go horizontal again, it remembers the horizontal 
location, but when okay. you're vertical again, it goes back down to the bottom. Oh, I could have sw- Yeah, um, I thought that would remember a location. I thought they were. Yeah, it doesn't always things. do it. Um, but I was thinking, uh, to be honest, you know, aside from maybe simplifying stage manager a little bit when it's in dot mode, I'm generally pretty happy with it. Um, I got a few more gripes kind of on the iOS side rather than the iPad in terms of, you know, as I've gotten older, I tend to have display zoom on my phone and there are the UI just breaks in places and there are literally buttons that you can't even tap. Um, and I've been raising this on every single beat. Every single summer I raise an absolute shed ton of display zoom issues and none of them ever get fixed. Um, so the iPad I'm actually pretty happy with is like, you know, like I said, widgets and, and st- I, stage manager is probably the most important one for me. Just simplifying that desktop experience a little bit, I think. And I know, you know, once I, maybe I just need to get used to it, but I still feel like I'm walking through quicksand a little bit sometimes. Um, and some of that is me and, and some of that's iPad, I think. But uh, no, generally I'm pretty happy with it, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, one of these years, I'm just hoping the whole audio system gets a major upgrade, both in the ability to play back multiple audio sources at once and the microphone be able to like feed that multiple places uh, like oh the whole... yeah the podcast yeah yeah so you can podcast with others properly basically like you, like yeah yeah no i know yeah that was one that i i re- remember when i was doing an ipad i used to do a podcast called ios only which was um long since retired but i just i did everything on the on, on iphone and ipad you know it was you know and that was when I was trying. As soon as it stopped, it was when I wanted to try and record with other people. And that's where I was like, I can't, I can't do this. I don't know how to do this on with multiple people. Um, like you said, you can't record that local. I couldn't record this local source now while we're talking. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to have my phone somewhere or whatever. You know, it's uh, or or but, use um, Riverside or one of the paid services. But mm. if the podcast doesn't make enough money to justify that, you know. It's no go. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's always hard to justify costs on passion projects a lot of the time, isn't it? And and it's the the, the, the you, you you can't you do put money in. You know, I do. You know, everyone puts money into their own pro- passion project, but there's a limit, isn't there? And it's like, you know, yeah. And there's a difference between one time costs versus subscriptions. It, yeah. Well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a little bit different with a blog where I can justify my one off yearly kind of hosting because I host everything with WordPress. So. But if it was suddenly like thirty pounds or thirty dollars a month, yes, type thing, I'd be have to rethink it. <laughs> yes. Well, anything we haven't touched on that you'd like to before we wrap it up? Um, I don't think so. It's just been kind of good to talk through, you know, how I've been using the iPad. And to be honest, I kind of surprised myself with how much I've enjoyed using it again. It was weird because I took like over over a year without even having an iPad, really, you know, a full size one. And I thought this would be a good experiment, you know, help with you know, the RSI and, and try and get some flexibility around my setup. And I didn't think I'd be here this far on. I know it was only three months, but for that's quite a long time, just using an iPad, you know, for my, for my completely dumping the Mac, you know, and just coming over to iPad for three months. I don't see me going back. Um, I much prefer the setup now. So yeah, no, it's been, I don't know, you know, I think we've covered a lot of stuff. I appreciate you having me on. Um, it's been good, good to chat to an, another iPad. Um, enthusiast or expert or you know whatever we call ourselves but um no it's been good yeah and it was uh cool reading kind of your updates as you've been going on and um yeah and then it was a surprise to you that oh this actually works now I'm, I'm yeah i'm places. living that yeah 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 i'm really enjoying it and and i'm, I'm kind of it's for the first time in a long time i've been excited about you know wwdc in terms of the ipad usually you know ios for me is kind of where my main interest is into you know for the last few years and even the mac when i was using it i was just like okay i'm not you know and the ipad was always felt like it was left behind a bit but this year is the first year in a while that i've been i'm more excited about the ipad os bit than, than the, the ios bit yeah no it should be a very exciting year and we'll bring new ipads the month before as the rumor saying and mm. it should be exciting times yeah yeah i hope so hope so yes <laughs> or it could be forgotten and we'll get the AI stuff uh, next year for iPad. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, yeah. Don't say that. Yeah, all this amazing stuff coming to the iPhone and no announcement at all on the iPad. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully not. But You've just cursed it now. That's probably going to happen. Probably. I think you've seen into the future. That's going to happen. <laughs> you can see it now. Oh, gosh. Well, uh, Lee, where can people find your uh, awesome blog and follow you online? 
Oh, cheers, thanks. Um, so the blog's at ljpuk.net. Um, you'll see links to everything there. So that's probably the best place. Um, I've got links out to the YouTube, the photography, the Mastodon, uh, wallpapers that I, that I put out. So yeah, cheers. That's, that's probably the best place to, to find me. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Lee. Thank you. Cheers for having me on again. Well, that was my interview with Lee. My thanks to Lee for his time recording. My thanks to you for your time and attention tuning in. As a reminder, you can support this podcast over patreon.com slash ipapros. My thanks to everyone that supports the show. With that, I'll talk to everyone again real soon.